So hello, good afternoon. My name is Giovanni Dennis. Welcome to our Talk Up Youth, Youth for Chat Town Hall meeting, where we are essentially providing a platform for you to discuss issues with your elected officials, that is a member of parliaments, your mayors, your councillors, and also other elected officials as well, and leaders in the parish, essentially. So whatever the issues we are about, I want to talk about it. I looked at a picture that was posted in the group that we are yesterday that Empress posted, and I see the issues them. I see unemployment, and I see uniquely, I see laziness. I don't know who now is lazy, for only lazy, are the elected officials them lazy. So we're going to find out all these things as we're going to discuss them when everything uh, comes to light. Before we go any further though with the issues, I would just want to ask each person on the platform just to introduce themselves, starting right to my left, right here. So this beautiful lady right here, go ahead. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Maurice Guy. I'm yeah, a member of parliament for Central St. Mary. Afternoon, everyone. My name is Richard Prairie. I am the councillor for the Richmond Division in St. Mary and Mayor of Port Maria, Chairman of the St. Mary Municipal Corporation. Okay, just before we begin, I would just like both the Member of Parliament and the Mayor to tell us what your roles and responsibilities are, briefly. All right, um, thank you very much, Giovanni. Um, the Member of Parliament, the role of Member of Parliament is that he's the political representative for the constituency and he sits in the House of Representatives. He's one of 63. There are 63 constituencies in the island. There are three in St. Mary, um, Southeast, Central, and Western St. Mary. And I am the Member of Parliament for Central St. Mary. The area comprises four um, geographical parish council divisions, which are Port Maria, Highgate, Islington, and Hampstead. And our role, well, as members of parliament, is to represent and to make, to represent the interest and to make representation on behalf of the citizens of the constituency. All right, thank you so very much. Okay, um, I am, as I said, mayor of Port Maria which is the title given to, to each mayor. The, the, the title is, is the title from the capital town. So Port Maria being the capital town, I am the mayor of Port Maria. But I'm also the chairman of the St. Mary Municipal Corporation. And it is as chairman of that corporation that you really have powers to do anything. So any documents I sign, I sign as chairman of the municipal corporation. We are responsible, I'll try to be as brief as possible. We are responsible for parochial roads, um, what minor water supplies we are responsible for markets transportation centers cemeteries um, we are the ones responsible for the whole planning process building construction if you are constructing a home you need to apply to the corporation for a plan if you're doing a subdivision again you need to apply to the corporation so we also are responsible for the infirmaries so we have the St. Mary infirmary we also are responsible for persons who are considered outdoor poor, persons who live within their own dwellings, but we assist them with um, medical assistance, um, school assistance, and give them a stipend on a monthly basis. So those are just, in a nutshell, some of the responsibilities of the corporation. As chairman of the St. Mary Municipal Corporation, I'm also chairman of the local board of health. So we work very closely with the health department to, to carry out the various um, activities and the laws pertaining to health throughout the parish. All right, so poor roads and infrastructure, lack of adequate transportation, and 70% lack of job opportunities after leaving school are some of the primary issues noted in a baseline survey done by Talk Up Youth um, across the island affecting youth in St. Mary. Uh, job opportunities after leaving school. Uh, we do have a question specifically from Deep Fraser. Mr. Fraser, are you there? Well, good afternoon. Um, there seems to be an issue with young people leaving St. Mary for jobs. Why haven't the MP advocates for investments on our, ad investments on our behalf? Okay, so youth are migrating, they're leaving St. Mary, going into other parishes, probably neighboring parishes, for employment opportunities. 
why hasn't uh, or haven't the MP or MPs uh, in, in this instance done anything to keep them here or to provide investment opportunities for them or employment opportunities for them in the parish? We get it right? Uh, that, uh, that, that, that was it? Okay, yes? So clap me now, man. We get your question right. <laughs> your question. Go ahead. All right. Um, first of all, the question, what you're saying is indeed true. There are lack of employment opportunities for young people. But it's not only confined to St. Mary, but our discussions here today is about St. Mary. Firstly, St. Mary is one of those parishes that is recognized as a tourism-based parish. And what you will recognize is that there are three or four hotels which have been called hotels in St. Anne or Ocherius. Um, they're actually in St. Mary. And this is one of the areas in which young people have been getting some employment. We are a dormitory parish in terms of those persons who work there. Now, in terms of getting jobs after school, and I was having a discussion um, just with one of the young ladies here a while ago, having academic qualification does not necessarily put you in the job world. You have to have a vocation, whether <clears throat> training in some areas, um, IT, and heart as a whole side of these. So, to go to the question that I've asked, one of the things that we have tried, or I have tried to do for St. Mary, is we have been having discussions with the Money College, and also with Mr. Donaldson, who owns the area where the Money College is located in Land Romney, about the possibility of having um, one of these areas where the operators of these IT centers would have facilities open for St. Mary. One of the challenges we have, though, is that the communication infrastructure, the backbone, that is the internet infrastructure into St. Mary, is not sufficient to, to have one of these centers. And we have been working with the IT providers such as Flow and Digicel to see whether we can get better IT facility at that site so that we can have one of these um, um, entities operating here. When but that's just one. Even within that one, I, I just want to do a quick follow-up before I allow the uh, mayor to, to give his response. Um, I want to agree with you that, yes, the internet service here is poor. Uh, my, my colleagues said they, they were trying to download some stuff this morning and, and, and they had hell with it. Uh, so if you can hasten that process to get the internet service. No, uh, the one you're referring to is, is wireless. Wireless. We're talking about land-based. Oh, land-based yes, internet. Yes, that is because the speed at which you need those for. Right. It would have to be something provided by Flow or Digicel well, Play. And both, well, both, well, both the wireless one that I guess is, is also very slow as well. When you say the IT centers, what specifically do you mean when you say, what are you referring to? Um, the jobs where people, um, like one in Montego Bay, the one in Portmore, you mean BPO call centers. centers. BPO centers, BPO. not just oh. call centers. Right. BPO, BPO, business BPO. process outsourcing. I thought that's what you meant. I just wanted to clarify. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, um, as, as the Member of Parliament alluded to, St. Mary has traditionally been uh, an agricultural or a tourism-based um, parish in terms of jobs that are available. And he dealt with it the, 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 in terms of the hotels that are actually in St. Mary but have an Ocherius address. But as I said, the other area traditionally, St. Mary was one of the wealthiest parishes back, back in the day of sugar cane and banana and coconuts, etc. So we are traditionally a farming parish. I know farming is something that young people tend to stay far away from today. But may I suggest that some of our young persons here look at that vocation because it, it, it is something that can make you a lot of money if you especially with the technology that is now available in terms of, of, of farming. Um, the question, I believe, was asked as to what was being done to bring investments into the, into the parish to create jobs. 
the member of parliament mentioned one area. Um, we had a number of factories back in the day in St. Mary, many of which have been closed. And those traditional type of factories probably no longer are competitive in Jamaica. So as was said, the BPO sector is where most of our jobs are being created. Government cannot, does not have the, the capability to employ persons. And actually, our public sector is, there are too many persons, and there is looking at rationalizing our public sector. So the government can't create such jobs. But what this government has been doing is, is creating the conditions to allow people to want to invest in Jamaica. And indeed, we, St. Mary should get its fair share in the near future. I'll follow up on that to get some specifics, but in the meantime, I just want to invite Shante Brooks from Baileysville uh, to go to the microphone. You have a question as well. Uh, you're next. Uh, to follow up on what you're saying, uh, Mayor, in terms of youth in agriculture, there are youth in agriculture, perhaps not the numbers that we'd want, but one of the inhibiting factors is the access to loans. There is great difficulty from our banks and other institutions, lending institutions, in terms of assisting youth. And I wanted to know if that really and truly is, is, is too much of a factor, the, the bureaucracy and how difficult it is for, for youngsters with great ideas, with great potential, uh, to really get help and get that startup capital, to start their own business or, or to invest in agriculture. How do we address that issue? It's something even that uh, or the Shah has spoken a lot about as well in terms of bank lowering their interest rates. But even in the, uh, in, the, in the initial phase, young people with great business ideas, not just in agriculture, who want to do startup, they have great difficulty. It is a challenge, but there are various um, agencies of government that provide these loans. And the government has, has, has taken, uh, as you said, Minister Shah has been speaking to it from years, since he has gone to that ministry. And I know it is something that is being dealt with. But it is a challenge in terms of young persons getting these loans. But it is something that is being worked on by this government to, to be able to provide persons with loans. Not only loans, but loans at lower interest rates. Interest rates are now at the lowest it has been since probably I can ever remember. And these lending institutions are being asked to lower their rates even further so that it will be enable persons to be able to borrow more to invest. Dr. Guy, you wanted to make another yes. point. Yes, um, thank you very much. The, the other area that we have left out, one of the things we have to realize is that it is not only investors coming into the parish that will make investment work. We are a creative set of people. And sometimes we have ideas that we can use to generate our own self-employment. Um, I don't necessarily mean anything that is small, because, but you have to start somewhere. I'll give you an example. There is a lady in Highgate who does baking. And um, she is involved in doing um, drops and gizardas and greater cakes. And she is now, because of the, the quality of the product, being approached by somebody out of Canada to see whether she can produce enough to ship to Canada so that they can sell in the, in the diaspora market there. So the point I'm making is that in, um, creating jobs is not necessarily someone coming in and providing an opportunity for you to create jobs. It is also something that we can look at as well. And as the mayor said, there are many government agencies which can assist you in developing an idea as you create. Thirdly, the, the fact is that um, there are many youths, and the mayor mentioned it. If I were to ask either of you here today, who is interested in some agricultural exploit? Could you have a show of hand? Who is interested in agriculture? Good. Majority. What year, the majority are interested in agriculture. Wonderful. What type of agriculture? Livestock. Crops. Crops. Agriculture. Agro-processing. But you have to have agro before you go processing. All right. So, so 
in, in tandem with what he said earlier on, the government is making um, land available for people who will want to go in these areas. So it's not only the money, you know, you have to have the land that you're going to create to, to, to do the agricultural exploit. But these are things that agencies are available, rather, they're not as, as responsive as we'd want them to be, but it is something that can be beefed up. All right, we're going to stay on this issue a little bit so we can properly delve into each other. This, the interested persons here can literally get like some practical answers that when they leave this town hall, they can say, okay, no, so I'm going to call the company, or I'm going to try this, or I'm going to link the MP, this is how we can do it. So I don't want us to just speak about it in an idealistic way, because there is some follow-up to that. Um, the young lady on stage raised her hand a while ago, like she want to ask a question, I'll soon come to you. I'm going to make Shante from Baileysville go ahead now. Good afternoon. My question to you is that how can we utilize the skills of the youths of St. Mary and combine it with the available resources that we have, like the lands and so, of our parish to improve or maybe create um, more job opportunities for the youths of St. Mary? Right. The, the skills that you mentioned, and I think that we're back on the same agricultural um, area because the plenty that we have in this parish is primary agriculture, unless you can tell me something else. Um, the skill that I'm talking about is not really like farming skills or anything like that, even though the, agric the agricultural sector offset me, because as you guys said, we are a place that is known for farming and tourism, mm -hmm. even though that needs to be tapped into more. Mm -hmm. The, the skills that I'm talking about is the human, is the human resources, the, uh, the, the talent, the, the, the abundance of talent that our, the young people of St. Mary have, and too much of it is being wasted. Too much of them, these young people in St. Mary are just sitting down um, after we finish high school with no other job, and the, major, the only thing that we can see really working for us is the, the hotel, the art trust NTA, but not many persons want to go into that. And if we, you guys who have the the, the, the power to do it. If, if you invest in us as young people, maybe we can make Jamaica even a better place. It's just young people have it all. So it just needs to be tapped into. And maybe some of us here who want to go into the agriculture side of that too much wasteland in St. Mary, they can maybe build a community center. To, we don't have internet access. Students can't get to do the homework. Literacy, literacy and numeracy um, just dropping too much of, of the, the potential. The potential is being wasted. All right. And they say maybe you. I love that question. Clap our feet. One objection to what you mentioned. Literacy and numeracy is not dropping. It's not dropping. But I understand the, the concerns you have. All right, but it's a multifaceted question because you ask about community center, you ask about the talents. Um, it is one thing, and I know that there are, there are measures afoot to, to have community access points in different areas in the constituency. For example, in the Islington Division, we are proposing to do an expansion to the Douglas Clark Community Center where we'll use it as a community access point, homework center, so the students who don't have the facilities, like those who are living in Highgate or Port Maria to go to the library, can utilize that as one of the areas. Back to the other thing, though. If you are not trained in an area, and I always come back to that, you will not be employable. You said that the vast majority of youths are not interested in art. But it has to have a starting point. Because leaving high school, it's not the days when, say, myself and the mayor left high school and that there were less of us with that high school education seeking the few jobs that were in the bank or in the other establishments out there. More people, more young people are leaving high school with high school qualification. But they do not have a, a skill. 
And the only agency or the primary agency in this country which deals with skill training is Heart NTA. So part of the mindset that we have to get our young people to understand is that apart from apprenticing with a man who is a plumber or so, and even those will need a certificate later on, you need, we need to open some more of these community centers to expand the heart training to other areas outside of the center in Port Maria, which is being done in Highgate, for example. We have, I was there Thursday night at a conference, but they had a hard training institution going on there where they're teaching young people. Similarly at Horace Clark High School in Islington and elsewhere, it's not unique. Part of what needs to happen, if I may say in closing, just for this year, um, is that probably what we need to do is to have better information so that our young people can know where they need to go to get some of these skills. And we have had an information deficit, and I will agree with you. We're going to so. follow up on that. I just want to just pause for one minute, or a couple of seconds, just to welcome another MP who is just arriving, Dr. Norman Dunn. Please give him a round of applause. Anybody can give me a, anybody know which, he's, he's, he's which constituency I'm responsible for? I can answer the question and can win a prize. Hi, everybody. I'm from 2030 Youth Jamaica, and he's from... Um, Oh my God. <laughs> Is the microphone a cause that make everybody oh, nervous? Oh, South East St. Mary JLP. <laughs> All right. The internet look like it at work now, though. You're correct. Clap, clap on yourself. When you finally get it right, some hard teamwork there. Good evening, everyone. My colleague, Member of Parliament, Mayor, Creary, um, other distinguished persons on the platform. Talk of youth representatives, youth in the audience. Good evening. Well, good afternoon. All right, good afternoon. All right, um, one of the challenges in Jamaica is youth unemployment. Um, St. Mary and South East St. Mary is no exception. Um, it's a fact that persons have migrated or maybe even consider migrating from the parish or constituencies. Uh, I should tell you, I mean, I was born in Anatobie, so I'm not just from the Anatobie division. I'm the member of parliament for all of South East St. Mary. And in fact, when I was young, I, I did leave, right? Because there was just no opportunity or opportunities in, in this side of the, 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 I would say, neck of the wood. However, migration is not in itself something that's bad because we're still in the island of Jamaica, and you'll find that there are going to be pockets of opportunities in different, different areas. Some of you sitting right here today, your parents possibly didn't come from St. Mary. But maybe they came in those days for job opportunities in St. Mary. So migration in itself is not an issue. What we want to ensure that there are opportunities for youths right across Jamaica. And as a member of parliament for South East St. Mary and all my other colleagues on the platform, it is one of our most ardent tasks to provide opportunities for you, maybe right here. Because once you're closer to home, the expense of having to travel or to go to somewhere is far less. So you would in fact want opportunities in your area. What we did... Um, the master ceremony mentioned that we campaign about jobs. I mean, as a part of the government of Jamaica, youth focus has been one of the main drivers for the prime minister that we have. It's a young prime minister. And he wants to ensure that youths have opportunities right across Jamaica. So it's not about campaigning in any specific areas about jobs. We want to be able to provide jobs for everybody. The mayor and my colleague, member of parliament, want to provide jobs for everybody right here in South East St. Mary. One of the things that I campaign on, however, is to try and bring opportunities closer to you. I'm a member of parliament for seven months. So we are going through the process of trying to identify and to implement some of the plans. One of the key things that we have done so far is to do a job fair because we need to find out what are the skill sets that exist within the constituency 
so we can match you with whatever opportunities that are available immediately. A second, Dr. Dr. Dunn, uh, where was this job fair held and when? This was held in a, in a not to be, um, I think it was in early January. Just let just me do a, look, uh, just a quick check. Any, anybody here was aware of that job fair? Just me show hands. How many were aware? Two. One of the things that uh, Dr. Guy mentioned is that the, the information, the communication needs to be improved. So there may be opportunities in pockets and a room for, for young people to take advantage of, but if they don't know about it properly in terms of the, how it is promoted to them or marketed to them, they just don't know so they can't do anything about it. So perhaps that is something that we, we may need to consider in terms of how we spread the information. It, if I could come in here, because yes. you mentioned only two persons here, but how many persons are here from Southeast St. Mary? You have to take that into consideration. Yeah, right. But in, in, in continuing with it, the, the whole idea of jobs and, and opportunities, the young lady, I, I like the question and the, the passion with which you posed it. Um, you mentioned that Heart is the only institution providing training. Dr. Guy alluded to it, but Heart is a very important institution. And we must not only seek opportunities within St. Mary, but we must seek opportunities in the island and overseas. There are a lot of our skills that we have in Jamaica that are on demand in places like Canada and the US, etc. Right? They are coming here from all over the world stealing our nurses, our doctors, right? our teachers, our pharmacists. So there are opportunities that we don't only have to look within Jamaica. There are opportunities. The world is open to us. I saw the young lady a while ago, I'm sure, had her phone in her hand, and I believe she Googled the answer. So the world is available to us, right? There are a lot of opportunities. But we must understand that the government or us as representatives can't provide you with all those opportunities. The government, on the other hand, though, is there are a number of opportunities that have been created for young people. For example, there was a graduation the other day. I hope I, I got the name right. Is it the National Service Corps? Right. Where there are a thousand young persons who are, will be, the army will be taking in and training a thousand young persons every year. There is a CAP program that is run out of the university, Ministry of Science, Energy and Technology, where a thousand young persons have been trained. I don't know if any CAP students are here. They have been trained, and then they will be put in various government agencies to, to, to work for one. This is a one-year program again. The national, the, the, the HOPE program is another program that is employing a whole heap of young persons. This year, the summer employment program is the largest it has ever been in the history of Jamaica. Not only being run, um, what's the name of the merge entity, Heart and, and, and that entity. Right. Not only through that entity, but there are various other entities of government that are employing persons, not only for summer. There's a, youth, a program taking place right now as we speak at UTEX, where students are being trained for three weeks in four different skilled areas. At the end of that training, they will get a certificate from UTEC, which UTEC being the institution it is. You have a UTEC certificate that will make you more employable. Right? So there are a number of opportunities. Even the summer programs, a lot of the times persons apply for jobs. And they say, what is your experience? Now, if you have worked three, four, five summers, you will be able to show that you have worked in various organizations. Not only those organizations that you work in, if you work well enough, once there is an opportunity, they will employ you. Right? And it is something that you can now add to your resume to make you more employable. So there are a lot of opportunities out there. Let me just pick up where the mayor ended. He mentioned that the summer program is the largest in the history of Jamaica. And maybe the statistics was given before that youth, youth unemployment is at the lowest level and still falling. The national unemployment level is at 9.6% and falling. So the point is, a lot of opportunities are being created. And as a young person, what I would like you to do is to seek out the opportunities. The moderator mentioned about communication and, and how do we communicate. The way we communicate about a job fair is the way our young people receive communication now, which is, in, which is Facebook, um, Instagram, Snapchat, WhatsApp. 
That's how we, that's how we had put out the information, you know? Because we have to connect with them. So we have to utilize the tools that they have. But what I want you to do, just as what the mayor mentioned about the young lady there that goes on the internet, go on the internet every day and look for the opportunities because they're there. The mayor didn't mention that just in parliament last week, Mike Henry, uh, which is a minister, minister in um, economic growth and development, or out of the office of the prime minister, announced, right, a plan that is going to be put in place to utilize Vernon Field as a training ground for aircraft persons. The Alpart site, Gisco, right, which is in Alpart, which is the largest single investment in Jamaica in so many years, done by both governments, the negotiations. But if you would have seen the, the plans for that. It's going to employ, I think, over 8,000 persons. There's one center in Kingston that is going to open soon called, um, I think it's 876, whatever. It's right on Alfredtree Road, right across from, um, beside NH, um, NHD. That is going to employ 5,000 young persons. So there are so many opportunities coming up and I want all of you to prepare for them because it's going to be there for you. The Prime Minister said, in uh -huh. a very short time in Jamaica, we're going to have what is called full employment. In other words, everybody who wants a job will be able to get a job. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dunn. What literal steps you can give them for they can say, okay, try this way, reach out to this place to get X amount of help or to be pointed in, in that direction. Christina, about half hour, yes or no. My sincerest apologies. Ask a question now. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Christina Carr. Um, I think Dr. Maurice Guy, he actually take us... Uh, he said something about what I'm going to ask, so let me go ahead. In improving the parish of St. Mary, what are the steps that are being taken place to assist with the development of the tertiary institution within the parish? And I'm speaking from a personal um, point. I went to Money College and I did an associate degree in social work. I was unable to go to UTEC and UE simply because my parents could not afford. The tuition is one, but you know when you go there you have to look about boarding and food and all of that. So I want to know what is being done to bring more tertiary level institution within the parish. And another thing is that it stems from job opportunities in St. Mary. My first job that I got was in St. Anne. And while studying part-time, it was very difficult for me to travel from St. Anne to St. Mary in the evening. So we want job opportunities. We know that we can branch out and go elsewhere, but if we're gonna study and work part-time, it, it would be very difficult for us to go elsewhere and then try to study in St. Mary or study outside. Whether or not we need job opportunity and better, our development in the tertiary level um, sector. Yes, Monique is a, is a starter. The, the challenge we have though is that, I mean, it is not always practical for some of these tertiary institutions to have a satellite one in each parish mm. or campus in each parish because you have to think about the logistics and the cost. So what they have sought, um, sought to do is to have them in designated area, Ocherius, Montego Bay and across the island. So it might not be prudent to have one here in St. Mary, but at least we started off with something. And some of them are, are also satellite colleges for UTEC and university as well, because of course. Dr. Dunn, briefly. Yeah, I want to um, pick up on Dr. Guy's point. Um, I share your concern. I mean, it's something that happened to me when I was a youngster in, in St. Mary as well. But what we have done successfully for South East Mary, that is, uh, as a member of parliament, is that when I came in, I looked at the Cape Clear property and I started lobbying in different places to see if they could take the Cape Clear property and to, to turn it into a, a, a tertiary institution and or a satellite of a tertiary institution. And I'm, and I'm happy, I um, hope I'm not talking out of turns, but we have had some successful discussion with CASE. CASE. And it is highly possible that CASE will take that property 
come September. So at least we're bringing a tertiary institution into, into um, St. Mary and Southeast St. Mary in particular. If I could just quickly say, um, the point you raise about bringing tertiary institutions, that is something that we as a municipal corporation embarked on several years ago. And that is how money was able to come here. At the, at the time, the then Mayor Bobby Montague was instrumental in getting money here. Apart from getting money here, we also got land in Ballard's Valley. U UTEC has land in Ballard's Valley that was donated for a, for, a, for a campus. They have not taken up the offer as yet. We have a property, we have a property in Arakabesa that we gave to UE free of cost to do um, to bring pro um, their programs into the parish of St. Mary. One of the problems that these institutions are having, there are not enough persons from St. Mary taking up the offers when they put them out. They, they, they had that building down there for two years and they, they ran probably very few courses still we had to say, well, it's not working out and we took back the property. And we are, try we are in negotiation with somebody who I understand wants to do registered nursing in the parish of St. Mary. So we, we have re reacquired the property and we are in negotiations to see if we can get that done. But as I said, the universities are having an issue with persons in St. Mary taking up the courses they would be prepared to offer in St. Mary. Um, my question is, for the past two years in the community of Port Mariam, we have been experiencing a series of rodent inf infestri infestation as a result of improper garbage disposal by the wholesalers and the retailers. So my question is, what policies or legislation are put in place or will be put in place to eliminate this ongoing issue? Mayor, that's you, garbage collection. NWA, Municipal Corporation, what's going on? No, well, let, let, let me just clarify that. Funds from property tax are used to pay the National Solid Waste Management Authority for garbage collection. They meet with us monthly where we have discussions as to the challenges we are having, but the corporation is no longer responsible for garbage collection as it was many years ago. But we work closely with the National Solid Waste Management Authority. I know there have been challenges. The minister has, has purchased a number of trucks in recent times to, 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 to bolster the fleet of the National Solid Waste Management Authority. They still have other contractors that they utilize. But one of the issues we are having, in, I notice you mentioned wholesales and so on. These persons are supposed to have a contract, whether with, solid, with National Solid Waste Management Authority or a private garbage collector to collect commercial garbage. A lot of the times, what I see happening in Port Mary and in other major towns is that they find somebody of unsound mind and they come to the, 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 the um, wholesale every night, collect the garbage and go and put it in one of those garbage skips or drums, which is not supposed to happen. So the National Solid Waste Management Authority is something we have discussed with them and they are well aware of it and what they are supposed to be doing. Because persons can be charged if you don't show that you have a contract with an entity to, to, to collect your garbage. If it's a commercial facility, they can serve you notice. Right? So this is something I have said to them over and over, that we need to deal with the enforcement of these laws. We have a lot of laws in Jamaica, but a lot of the time it's the enforcement of the laws that allow people to get away with things, and hence the garbage issue that you mentioned. But it is a very good point. But it's something, as I said, we're working with National Solid Waste Management Authority about. On the issue of garbage collection, right now, presently, garbage is being collected one time a week in my community, don't know about nobody else, in Bellisville, and sir, the Ocean River, that same river that runs behind my house, if the garbage collection is not done, I'm not saying it's not being done, but it needs to be done on a more consistent basis because uh, it comes one time a week. If the, and then the next two, other two weeks, we don't see the garbage truck, then the, the residents, some of the residents there, they throw the garbage in the river, and then each same one come and pollute the autumn river, so causing pollution, environmental factor to be considered. And the, the point you raise about the wholesalers and the retailers, sir, when I walk in Port Mary, they just leave the, like, the boxes after the delivery has been done. 
the boxes is being left on the road, you can't walk on the road, the road ends. Sometimes you're going to these wholesales and retailers shops in Portmore, you're going there, you see road ends. And that is not hygienic. And then that will cause a problem on the health, the health All right. sector as well. Yeah. All right. so, 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 two, so two, I'm, I'm hearing two issues there, Mayor. Uh, one, enforcement and also the frequency with which uh, garbage is collected uh, in some communities. Uh, just those two issues uh, quickly. What are you doing to, um, to step up enforcement um, so that the wholesalers and retailers are not violating uh, public order? All right. garbage. What I would say to anybody who goes into any such business place and see rodents, Im immediately report it to whether the parish council or the health department so that it can be dealt with. I know the health department deals with these issues swiftly because that is a health hazard and we would never want anybody to get leptospirosis. In the past, the health department have gone to some of these wholesale wholesales and seized goods and have dumped those goods based on this type of thing. So report it if you see such things. Um, in terms of the garbage that is being thrown in the rivers all over, it's not, a, it's not unique to Baileysville. That is a situation. Citizens must understand we are responsible for containerizing our garbage and keeping it until the truck comes. So let us say the truck is to come every Tuesday. You are responsible for, for your garbage from that Tuesday afternoon Till the next Tuesday morning. But what we, what we do, in other first world countries, people don't do that. They store their garbage like in a garage or somewhere so that rodents and other things can't get to it. When the truck is coming, then you put it out. But what we do in Jamaica with us, as we use something and we, with the garbage is there, we just put it outside, dog take it, whatever. Or we just take it and throw it in a river, as you said. So we need to be a little bit more responsible and containerize and keep our garbage until the time when the truck is to come and collect it. And I want, I, I, as I said before, National Solid Waste Management Authority does have challenges that sometimes prohibits them from collecting the garbage on time, which is an issue. So it's two issues. They have an issue, but we as citizens need to be more responsible as well. So compromising. So moving on now to the issue of water and roads, so infrastructure and roads. Uh, Tonian, go ahead. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Tonian from Haywoodall. The community suffers some from severe water issues to the point where community members have to be purchasing water from private companies. When will this issue be solved? A uh, long-standing concern, Tonian. But let me explain what the situation is. The Eastern St. Mary water supply system gets the supply from Krish's wells, not wells, Krish's outside of Anato Bay. And the source for this supply is Anato Bay, Highgate with the reservoir and the surrounding areas, including as far as Richmond, where the mayor's division is. Islington, which includes Haywood Hall, as far away as Whitehall. Essentially what has happened is that this area is no longer, Christians is no longer able to give all the water that is required to supply the entire area it serves. When the system, which was built in 1968 or 69, was conceptualized, it was only supposed to have served Cromelon, Belfield, Clonmel, and sections of Highgate. Over the years, they have attached other areas to it, including here with all. So, we have a challenge, one, with the supply of water, and two, with the age-old infrastructure, the pipes, which the National Water Commission is resolving to do. I will tell you that about a month ago, um, I had a meeting with the Senior Vice President of the National Water Commission, the local office, to look at all these areas in Central St. Mary, where we have some challenges. But what is going to solve the problem is that the National Water Commission has on their plans a project that they have dug two wells already in Agualta Vale, that is near the Westmoreland Bridge, and they are going to bring more water into Highgate so that they can shunt more water from creches into the Islington area so here we all can get water on a consistent supply, as the other areas will, including Southeast and where I live. Um, 
Bad road, bad roads has been a major issue for a very long time. Bad roads located in Freehill, Bonnie Gates, Frontier Phase 2, Jacks River, Cog Street, Haywood Hall, Sunside, etc. No. Now these bad roads can lead to various. It can cause damage to vehicles. It can cause students to reach school late, which can re reflect bad on their reports. It can't, and the list goes on. My question is, what is being done to fix these bad roads? Very important question. All right. Frontier Phase 2 is a development of the Housing Agency of Jamaica. has not been turned over to the Parish Council yet, nor it is a National Works Agency road. If you go there now, you'll see some work being done in Frontier Phase 2. As it relates to Bonnie Gate, that's Western St. Mary, but I know you access through um, Sunside, go up to Preston Hill and get into Bonnie Gate. It is a challenge that we have been having, and even though we have been having some infrastructural road improvement in the parish, successive governments have not been able to deal with all the roads that are required to be fixed on a timely basis. So we have had some improvements in some of them, and there are some that the parish council may well answer in terms of what um, plans they have in place. But as it relates to Sandside, Preston Hill, and going into what's the other year mentioned? Bonnie Gate. They, 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 I've been making representations to get that particular road fixed, although it is only the Sandside to, to Preston Hill aspect of it that falls in this constituency. Mayor? All right. Um, just, I just want to bring a little bit of clarity to it. And if I'm, if I'm saying anything incorrect, any idea, I invite you to just correct me. Uh, I hear a little chip in my mic. I don't know if it's, it's, okay, it's better now. So for the main roads that you'll see in, in the parish, or in any parish, generally speaking, the NWA will be responsible for those roads. So that's what we call the primary roads. In the, so the, so the, the, the highway, the North Coast Highway and them thing, they were run straight from, say, from Portland to St. Mary to St. and straight to Mobe. Uh, all them, the main roads, the NWA responsible for it. Now the parochial roads, which will be roads that run in some of the communities and other roads off the main roads, they're called the secondary roads. The parish councils, I, I from my understanding, would be responsible for that. And so those are where some of the primary issues are. Those not somewhere for the a true representation of how they are divided. Right. But um, for the most part, yes. If, 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 if any part is wrong, tell me which part is okay, that no, is I, not true, that wrong. Tell if me. You, if you allow me, I will tell you which part of it is wrong. What you had said is basically the main thoroughfare through the towns is NWA. NWA has a whole lot more roads than just those main thoroughfares. No, I know. I, I was just speaking just for, 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 for a short illustration here, just for persons to understand. I wasn't speaking okay, about the, okay. the overall responsibility right, of the NWA. Right. No. So the NWA response, as you said, for the, for the major arterial roads and the, the parish council are responsible for the smaller roads, which we call parochial roads. Um, we, so we have been having challenges like anybody else with funding in terms of repairing roads. But I can say since December 2016, when I took over again as chairman of the corporation, we have, we have fixed at least 20 to 30, between 20 and 30 such roads, right? In 2007, we were only able to do, I think at the time, it was somewhere about five or six roads in, in 2000. 16 before we took over so we have we have increased the amount of roads that we have we have been repairing based on the allocations that we have been giving but i want to say one thing if you will notice it is the most road work that has ever gone on in jamaica at any point in time when you look in kingston you see you see major road work constant spring you see the hagley park road and that flyover every junction road every constituency of Jamaica has major road work going on. Even the road from Highgate um, heading to, uh, to, to Port Maria has been done. So there has been no period in our history that so much road work has been going on. And you will see even more because as our economy continues to improve, there will be more funding available to do capital projects, which is what, what roads, those major roads are. 
So you will see a whole lot more roads done. And even so, Minister Mackenzie has come up with an initiative as well, where he has provided the corporation the other day with, well, he's, he's doing it for all the corporations. $25 million, and we are supposed to do like four, maximum of four roads with it. So we have, we have, we have chosen in St. Mary those, those roads that we'll be doing, but out of our monthly funding, which is what is called the parochial revenue fund, which comes to us on a monthly basis, we fix at least three, sometimes four roads out of that funding as well. I, 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 I see you, Dr. Dunn, but uh, there are some, some of what you said that there comes up for, for, for some challenging uh, Mayor Creary. The answers, though, are not particularly certain you'd necessarily be able to answer because this probably would have to come from the NW in terms of how some contracts are assigned. But yes, roadworks are taking place now in some constituencies across the island. And just bear with me, everyone. But the, the, the troubling and the worrying issue that has plagued Jamaica, we, we have a chronic uh, bad construction of our roads. And that's the problem. It's not that road patching don't happen sometimes, you know. But I was reading uh, 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 the security policy for Jamaica 2013, Ministry Paper 63, just last night. And one of the things it speaks about is that we continue using bad contractors who literally do shoddy road projects. So yes, I have some projects fixing now, but then in three months time, as soon as rainfall, in the hurricane period, no, when rainfall, plays, and the whole of the place has washed up and mash again. So that's the issue, the quality of the roads that, that we have uh, be, being developed. How do we address that to improve the quality? I tend to disagree with you and disagree vehemently. You got applause and probably you did that for the applause, but it is not a fact. Right? Definitely not a fact. There is no road that we have done that last three months has rain come to wash away. No, that, I'm not aware of that. I am not aware of that. Right? And especially, especially the projects that I mentioned, those major roadworks, it has to be done to certain specifications. I hear a person saying, yes, I would love to hear an example. Haywood Hall was not... Hold on, hold on, hold on. You mentioned Haywood Hall. That is an NWA road and was done, Dr. Guy, how many years ago? It was done some years ago. That was not three months ago. That's why I said it, it sounds good, this three month thing. No. It do, it's not no three months. All right. Haywood Hall was done probably three years ago, if not longer. Mayor Query, this is not an indictment on... Just quiet everyone. This is not an indictment on the work that is being done now or attempts to improve what we have. I'm speaking factually about a historical fact. And what I said was not my opinion either. I quoted a ministry paper, which the is ministry the security paper policy. Ministry paper didn't say three months. What? You said three months, no, not the ministry paper. No, I, I am telling you okay. for a fact that we do have situations where roads are patched and within three months' time, they, they, they disintegrate it's again. Is it patching you're referring to or are you referring to rehab? You're going to patch it now. Yeah, you're getting defensive, man. No, man, but, but, no, but, but hold on, hold on. If you allow me to make the point, it'll be, it, no, 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 be very simple. I'm will, not trying to be disrespectful. No, but I will not allow, allow you to, the point. To, 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 to say things that are not so, mm -hmm. right? Just because you have an audience who is willing to listen, right? I will not allow that. Did the ministry paper say that these roads are mashed up in three months? You said you are quoting from a ministry paper. No, I said that shoddy road projects are done that the ministry paper spoke about with bad construction. I am saying as a Jamaican, when live here, Missy Road mash up in a three months. That's all I'm saying. And I'm not specifically speaking about St. Mary. Well, you must make that distinction. Make that distinction. That. I am speaking about St. Mary. Yeah, but I talk okay. about national. You know, so living in the, in the country. Uh, make yeah. the distinction. You are speaking to people from St. Mary. And then when you, when you said what you said, you noticed the lady applauded and said, here with all. Here with all was done years ago. No, if there are persons in St. Mary. And I'm, I, don't, I really don't want to get confrontational because that's not the, the nature of this thing here. As a resident of St. Mary, I've seen, as you have said, I've seen the roads being fixed and they mash up in a three months for two. Yeah. Right, I mean, like, look at Bailey's Railroad. Well, road. Again, again. Look, look. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We stop it. Again. We want to taxi for we can't get taxi. When you finish, I'll, Just because I'll, the taxi man them now come the road, just because we can't. We can't get a taxi just because the taxi man them said them would have mash up. They more would have mash up than care. Moderator. Yes. Uh, I understand the concern you have there, but I think part of the distinction that needs to be made 
and would not have created so much issues right here now is whether it is patching or road construction, rehabilitation. One, if it is a rehabilitation program, there's a guaranteed period within which if there's any defects, the contractor has to repair that. And that period of guarantee is about six months. Okay? The young lady and others are referring to patching, patching of the roads, which is something, and the Baileysville one was one specifically. Now, Bailey's, Baileysville is one of those roads that need a complete rehabilitation. But until, until that can be done, what is being done in the meantime is periodic patching. And we understand the concern about the tax is not wanted to get there. But something is going to be done about it. And within the next four weeks, the section from the bridge going up to Freehill will be rehabilitated. Not just patch, will be rehabilitated. But we need to draw this distinction between complete road rehabilitation, which we are all in one accord about, and patching of the road, which is not necessarily infrastructure, but um, poor material. It is a situation where, in St. Mary, we have certain challenges. And part of what I think the moderator needs to understand is that we need, yes, government or the National Works Agency needs, no, 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 I think you'll agree with me, needs to look at the material that is used in St. Mary, which is going to be more expensive than building in St. Anne because of the nature of this clay that we find here in St. Mary. So when you use marl on the road, ideally in St. Mary, that should not be because we have a situation with this clay that we call Belfield clay in St. Mary, which is difficult to work with, different from other areas. So. The challenge and the, and, and, and the decision we're going to have to take is do we build one mile of road that is going to cost, say, a million dollars, or do we do a third of that road which is going to cost a million dollars with a better improved material? It is something that the National Works Agency has to look at, and it is something that we, at the end of the day, will benefit from if that particular look is made. All right, I want to bring a, a, a point to your attention. Um, persons mentioned NWA roads and parish council roads, but there's a third road network, which is our farm roads, which are also done either through RADA or whatever the implementing agencies. But a point that Mayor Clare mentioned before, I want to build, build on that point. Two things. One, apart from the fact that now you're seeing the most road not just repair, but rehabilitation in the, almost the history of Jamaica taking place. There's a reason for it. And as young persons here, where to understand is because you need to research it and understand how economies work. Jamaica's always had what you call a high debt to GDP ratio. If our debt is high, then the amount of money that we earn internally will be used first to pay our debt because we have a responsibility to our debtors. But once that falls, which is what is happening now, we're coming from a high of 140 or 145, and we are approaching, if not already, under 100. So what that has done effectively is to release a lot of money that would normally used to pay our external or internal debtors, creditors, sorry, for it now to use for infrastructure work, hospital development, and other things. So going forward, you're going to see as the economy continues to improve and our debt to GDP ratio falls because we're actually, we wanted to fall to about 60 by 2020. Once that occurs, you will start to see an unparalleled amount of road repair and infrastructure development never seen in this country. So by 2020, when we have this meeting here again, you're going to be seeing completely a different tune. Because what will happen is that we will have invested so much that you will have to talk about something else. Let me mention something about repair, patching versus rehabilitation, which both my colleagues have said before. And I wanted to just think about it because I was like you before until I became the member of parliament. And it is this. If you have a stretch of road that needs patching, remember it is a complete stretch of road. So some potholes has come up and you have patched those. 
In three months' time, as some as you will say, you say more pathways come again. Remember, it is the same road, but we only could have patched the section that the pathways presented themselves at that time. The same road is going to break out continuously until that road is completely rehabilitated. So you will, in fact, possibly see in three months, three months, three weeks sometimes, new holes come up and say, look, boy, them waste the money and they must eat off the money. That's not what it is, because it is the same road. The road hasn't changed. So you're, you're just repairing the ones that came up at the point in time where the patching is happening. And then persons will say, oh, a shoddy workmanship and shoddy workmanship. Sometimes it is. But if you look, you realize it's not the same spot. That the, the new path will come up and come out of another spot because it is the same road that will eventually need complete rehabilitation. So I just want you to understand that. We have to move on. We can spend an entire day speaking about roads and then some things we probably have to agree to disagree. And that is fine in some instances. Uh, but uh, we'll move on to the issue of the Constituency Development Fund. And Vanessa Smith has a question for uh, Dr. Guy. Vanessa Smith. Good day once more. I am Vanessa Smith. I am from Port Mara Housing Scheme. At the workshop yesterday, we learned that East Con Constituency received 20 million each year. Can you, Dr. Guy, please tell us how this money was spent in, Saint, in Central St. Mary? Sure. All right. There's 20 million dollars for Constituency Development Fund. Each year, we spend six million dollars for tertiary grants that go to students, which is leaves $14 million. $400,000 goes to the Apache Fisherman's Regatta as a grant. We spend $2.6 million on the RADA projects for farmers who need farming inputs in the parish. So we're going to um, six and we're gone $9 million. Um, we have the consultant who works on the project as each constituency does gets 1.5 million dollars labor day is six hundred thousand um, dollars we have the let me try now it's, it's 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 oh we have thank you very much we have welfare which is people who will need um like assistance to do a test that they can't get in the public sector that they may have an emergency, they want to help to bury the dead, right? We give a contribution towards that. Two million dollars comes out of the fund towards that. Two million dollars goes towards social housing. So, and there's one million dollars for economic enablement grant that is open to constituents across that they can get as much as 25 to 30 thousand dollars as a rehab grant. That was the final. Is there any other question? Any follow-up question as it relates to the Con Constituency Development Fund and how it is used specifically? Yes. But no? to add, to add that the CDF office requires that every two years there is a public consultation within the constituency, and we have been true to that form in Central St. Mary. You wanted and, to add something? And all it is done, as Dr. Dunn reminds me, projects go to a parliamentary committee and they approve the projects. And to, to, to just to indicate something for those who are here who might have a misconception, not one cent passes through the MP's hand. We have implementing agencies. Oh, there was a Christmas work program there, which is about $3 million. That makes it to 20. Goes through the implementing agencies. The St. Mary Municipal Corporation, the Social Development Commission, RADA, and in some instances, you may do infrastructural projects to the National Works Agency. These are the agents that hand, agencies that handle the money. We just make the recommendations to them based on the requests that come in from the constituents and the respective projects. Which agency would you handle, like, if you're assisting with Nainite and burial of family? No, we don't assist with Nainite. We say family burial? No, no, no I said burial. That, uh, that is Which like paying to the morgue. The to Social the Development Commission. Social Development Commission, okay. So I just want to add to that, and I want everybody here, when they leave here today, to remember this. Dr. Guy said it, but I want to reinforce it. That $20 million, it sounds like a big money, but it's not. That's number one. It started out at $40 million, and with our economic issues, it, re re it was reduced. I'm hoping that the, the powers that be eventually see it fit 
to increase it because it's very small. But the thing I wanted to leave with here today is that not one cent goes through the member of parliament's hand. That money, has, we can't see that money, we don't touch that money, nothing at all. While we make recommendations and you know, we assist persons, it has nothing to do with the member of parliament. CDF is an office by itself which has its own mandate, it has its own control systems that ensures that every, set of, every cent of taxpayers' money is in fact accounted for. Once the, the, the um, assistance is given, there must be a record of that assistance that can stand up to scrutiny anywhere. So we to leave here with it today that not one cent goes through the member of parliament's hand. Uh, I just have one small question. Where persons are having issue about roads, water, and all of that, and there are solutions that are put in place, but where can the public find these information? Because it, if, it, if it was presented to us or available to us, probably we'll have to find other issues to ask you. But um, you have plans in place, but we don't know, so we are here outside cursing and telling us other stuff and burning people out. When you guys actually do have plans, and plans will take process, so we need to know where can we find that type of information. I'm going to answer for the mayor. <laughs> Tell me any of you who have, who, any of you who might have gone to one of the, the meetings that the municipal corporation have in the respective communities. Show your hand. One. We didn't one. hear of it. No, no. Communication. Dot on, on, dot on. On. Communication. You know, every time we are having these community meetings, how we advertise them? We use a town crier. We send a flyer to every church, right? In the communities. So is it that the young people don't attend church? Right? But we send every church, every post office, we put one on every post office. We do a town crier in the district. And I will tell you, you see, one of the problems we have in Jamaica, and we need, to, we need to face it, persons don't want to participate in their own governance. They like to sit on the sideline and criticize, which is what you alluded to. But when we go out in the communities and we invite persons, for example, I've said, I wonder if it's a waste of time to have these community meetings. After we go through all the effort, we bring the fire department, we bring GPS, water commission, everybody. And all of us go there, and when we go in a room like this, the agencies fill half of the room, and the other half of the room is empty. Five people from a community, six people. Right? And it's not because we have not advertised and announced it. I will agree with you. I remember going to a community meeting in, in Highgate, I think it was sometime March or early April, and I did a register, and less than 30 persons were there. So I do agree with you. 30 is good. I have been to some where I see seven people. Again, let, let, me, try, so let, let, let me try again. Do you accept that we can probably improve the way we communicate to reach to people? That's, that is all I'm saying to say. Do right. you, how I, do we improve that? I accept that there can be probably other forms of communication. However, we have used the form of communication that we think best. But if you, are, if you are any suggestions from you or the audience, we will take them on board because we don't want to put out this effort. As I said, it's a great effort. You bring 10 agencies, right? You get up with a church, a school, whatever. You put up PA system, you do everything. And then you come and you speak to five or six people. It's a waste of resources. So I am open to any suggestion as to how to get more persons. But I am convinced a lot of the times, people know of these meetings. But they don't say, why I can't bother? Because a lot of the time, people don't want to participate in their own governance. Which is why we're here trying to fix that. Young people here, do you at all want to participate in your own governance and the, and the governance of a parish? Yes or no? Yes. All right. That's one. How do they get in touch with you guys now? I know you probably have your parish offices, your social media pages and uh, different contact information but just for each of you before we even do any sort of wrapping up how do they get in touch with you and how do they find out about these various projects and programs that you have and meetings that will benefit them dr guy starting with you yes um there's the constituency office which is at 45 um Stennis street and um I'm, I'm just 
just going to give you the number because I don't have it off the top of my head. Um, it is nine, sorry, 876 994 9725. 994 9725. The office is open at 8.30 until 4.30, five days a week. Wonderful. Dr. Dunn. Yes, uh, my constitu constituency office is in Anotte Bay, Talk Bay, Anotte Bay. And the telephone number is 931-7207. I also have a cell phone contact, which is 538-3293. Social media pages, we are on Instagram, um, Facebook, Dr. Norman Dunn at Facebook, um, and we are also on Twitter. So we are, we are using all the methods of social media to stay and be in contact with persons. So the Anotta Bay office number again is 931-7207. Dr. Dunn, could you just repeat you know, your number as well, Dr. Yeah, Guy? Um, my number, as I said, was 994-9725. Um, yes, I'm on Facebook and Instagram, Dr. Maurice Guy, MP. And the, the constituency has a Facebook account as well, which is Central St. Mary constituency. Okay. Got a number this time? Okay, good. Uh, Mayor Creary. The St. Mary Municipal, Municipal Corporation's numbers, 994-2212, 994-2648. My, my office number, 994-9419. So I can be contacted through my office, but if you want general information pertaining to the corporation, you can call the other two numbers that I gave out first. Okay, so we've literally discussed all the issues that, that we set out to discuss. The one issue of employment, which is what I really want to stress here uh, for them, they had some questions that are related to the agriculture entrepreneurship, and if we just bear with us for five extra minutes, just to kind of provide a little bit more clarity for them, because we have reached the end of our time here, but I just wanted them to get some practical information in terms of where to go. Go ahead. Good afternoon again, everybody. I'm from 2030 Youth Jamaica. I just want to note that there have been a plethora of consultative conferences held in, held in St. Mary. So I just want to ensure that, you know, there won't be a repetition of this because I've, I've been to several where we have sat down and we have coined several recommendations in moving forward, which have not happened. So to foster effective, um, movement from this, from this conference. Firstly, youth in agriculture. Now, as, as the former minister, youth minister of agriculture, we want to see, our group want to see more youth in agriculture ventures, you know, allocating more of your constituency development fund towards youth in entrepreneurship. That's what our group has been doing. We have been giving grants for chicken, for livestock, for crop production, cash crops, so that we can stem unemployment in the parish because unemployment is one of the main problems we are having in St. Mary's. So it's not really a question, it's a recommendation. Secondly, you have speak about job fairs. No, there have also been a plethora of job fairs in St. Mary, but it has not been effective. Let me tell you why, and there is evidence for this. The other day, there was a job fair in couples. Some of you guys might be familiarized with it. No, hundreds of youths in St. Mary turned out to that job fair, sir, moderator, and ministers. And couples' sandals just needed 10 persons. And then you go back on social media and seemingly make it sound effective to say hundreds of persons turned out for the job fair today. And only 10 persons they needed. So have effective consultation with the stakeholders so that these youths can be employed. Thirdly, this is not a recommendation for you guys, but for you guys. The ministers and councillors, they have been using social media effectively. We have not been using it effectively. That's why we are here and you have been reiterating some of the issues that already, ha already have occurred. So use social media effective. Ask them question, Minister Guy, I WhatsApp me, respond in second, Dr. Don Creary, speak to them, right? Because then we won't, be effect we won't be able to effectively regurgitate the facts when we go back into society, right? Thank you. Okay. Just, Thank you. where's 2030? 
This is 2013 no, no, Jamaica, the youth are... arm in Kingston. Youth oh, arm, okay. oh, I am from St. Mary. Okay. Right, so we are trying to establish a youth arm in St. Mary. All right, I can answer the question, the first part of it. You asked about where the, the numbers for the constituency office, and you can go into the constituency office. For those who would like to get assistance in terms of inputs in agriculture, that was the first part you asked. No, it was a recommendation. No, 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 no. But I'm saying, okay, based on your recommendation, mm -hmm. I'm advising how you can proceed. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the young people can go into the office and make requests for some of these assistants in right. agriculture. Right, that's what I said. They should use social media. Can no, no, no. The office, the constituency mm -hmm. office. Because making the requests on social media is not going to guarantee them making mm -hmm. anything on social media. Right? Because Point you get the request on social media, you can't get the, in, the, 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 the thing on social media. Come in, let's have some, some discussions about what is it that you need to do mm -hmm. or what you want to do, and then we can point in the right direction. And if assistance can be given in terms of financial assistance for that particular project you mentioned, livestock and chicken and that sort of thing, then let's have them come into the office and discuss it. If I may just add something to what you said. Um, some years ago, I visited a conference dealing with local economic development. And when I came back, I implemented at the St. Mary Municipal Corporation out of our property tax funding, where each parish, each council division is given. At, at, at present, we have increased it to $500,000 per year per councillor, and it can be used to deal with local economic initiatives, such as whether farming, shop assistance, that sort of thing. Because prior to that, we did not get such funding at the corporation. So each councillor has funds that can do 500000 is much, Granted, but at least we, the, each councillor is now enabled to assist persons with some form of economic initiative. Oh, Only that in my case, um, what I've done is set up not just one office in Anotte Bay, that's our main constituency office, but for every Thursday I visit an area in each of the divisions, so I make myself available to persons who can come to me for us to, to, to answer some of the issues they have and to offer some of the assistance that we can. So I have made myself available each Thursday, every Thursday, each week in, in a division, so person can come. But outside of that, there's a constituency office that's open every day, Monday to, Monday to Friday, that they can also visit. Okay.